Welcome to our physics lesson on Gauss's law. Today, we're going to learn about one of the fundamental laws of electrostatics, which is especially important for class 12 CBSE physics students. Let's start by understanding what Gauss's law is and why it's so useful. Gauss's law is a fundamental law in electrostatics that relates the electric flux through a closed surface to the enclosed electric charge. But before we dive into Gauss's law, let's quickly review what an electric field is. An electric field is a region around a charged object where other charged objects experience a force. We often represent electric fields using field lines, arrows that show the direction a positive test charge would move if placed in that field. These lines start from positive charges and end at negative charges. Now, let's introduce the concept of flux. Electric flux is a measure of how many electric field lines pass through a given surface. Mathematically, the electric flux phi E through a surface is given by the dot product of the electric field vector E and the area vector da integrated over the entire surface. Think of flux like water flowing through a surface. If the surface is perpendicular to the flow, maximum water passes through. If the surface is parallel, no water passes through. Similarly, electric flux depends on both the strength of the electric field and its orientation relative to the surface. Now we can state Gauss's law formally. The total electric flux through any closed surface is directly proportional to the net electric charge enclosed by that surface. Mathematically, Gauss's law is expressed as phi E equals Q enclosed divided by epsilon zero, where phi E is the total electric flux through the closed surface. Q enclosed is the net charge enclosed by the surface. Epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space. This is one of Maxwell's equations and a fundamental law of electrostatics. A key concept in using Gauss's law is choosing an appropriate Gaussian surface. A Gaussian surface is an imaginary closed surface that we choose to simplify our calculations. The beauty of Gauss's law is that we can choose any closed surface, but smart choices make calculations easier. For problems with spherical symmetry, we choose a spherical Gaussian surface. For cylindrical symmetry, we choose a cylindrical surface. And for planar symmetry, we choose a rectangular or pillbox-shaped surface. The key is to choose a surface that matches the symmetry of the electric field, so that E is either constant over the surface or normal to the surface, or zero, making the dot product calculation simpler. Let's apply Gauss's law to solve a practical problem, finding the electric field due to an infinitely long charged wire. Suppose we have an infinitely long wire with a uniform linear charge density lambda. For this problem, we use a cylindrical Gaussian surface with the wire along its axis. Due to the symmetry of the problem, the electric field must be one, radially outward from the wire two, equal in magnitude at all points equidistant from the wire applying Gauss's law. The flux through the sides of our cylinder is E times two pi R L, where R is the radius of the cylinder and L is its length. The flux through the circular ends is zero since he is parallel to these surfaces. The charge enclosed is lambda times L. Solving for E, we get E equals lambda divided by two pi epsilon zero. Our notice that the electric field decreases with one over R, not one over R squared, as for a point charge. This is a key result for infinitely long charged wires. Now, let's look at another example, finding the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge. Consider an infinite sheet with a uniform surface charge density sigma. For this problem, we use a pillbox-shaped Gaussian surface, a flat cylinder with a very small height with the sheet passing through its center. Due to the symmetry of the problem, the electric field must be one, perpendicular to the sheet two, equal in magnitude on both sides of the sheet applying Gauss's law. The flux through the top and bottom circular faces of our pillbox is E times A plus E times, where A is the area of each face. The flux through the cylindrical side is zero, because E is parallel to this surface. The charge enclosed is sigma times A. Solving for E, we get E equals sigma divided by two epsilon zero. Remarkably, the electric field is constant and doesn't depend on the distance from the sheet. This is a very important result for understanding parallel plate capacitors. Let's summarize what we've learned about Gauss's law. One, Gauss's law relates the electric flux through a closed surface to the enclosed charge. Two. Mathematically, it's expressed as flux equals charge enclosed divided by epsilon zero. Three, we can choose any closed surface, but smart choices based on symmetry make calculations easier. Four, for an infinite wire with linear charge density lambda, 
the electric field equals lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r 5. For an infinite sheet with surface charge density sigma, the electric field equals sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, independent of distance. For your CBSE class 12 exams, remember, identify the symmetry of the charge distribution, choose an appropriate Gaussian surface, apply Gauss's law to solve for the electric field. Thank you for watching. Practice solving problems using Gauss's law to build your confidence with this powerful concept.